What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 42 of Value Town. I'm your host, Chan Man V. Joining me, as always, my partner in crime, co host each and every week from TSM, Trump. How you doing, buddy? Well. <laughs> well. All right. Well met. Good. Good stuff. Our guest today, Raynan, returning to the show from uh, Team Tempo Storm, of course, owner, streamer, everybody, all that good stuff. How you doing today, Raynan? I'm good. I'm good. All right. Good stuff. Well, today we're going to be talking about the, con- the Construct Quarter. Yeah, of course, another uh, release from Naxxramas this week, which is great. Love August and July because of this. And uh, plenty to talk about. Uh, wanted to, this is kind of the week that everybody's been waiting for. A lot of the really interesting cards uh, for Naxxramas came out. And you know, I'm really excited to get a chance to talk about decks that Raynat and Trump have been working on this week. But I wanted to start off by just getting y'all's uh, general opinion about the the adventure mode itself and beating the heroic bosses and the class challenges themselves. So Trump, what do you think of this week? With the actual, we had four bosses this week instead of three. Wow, so many bosses. Yeah. Uh, much like the previous weeks, they let's see. About two of them had a really. Eh. <laughs> Two of them had a pretty novel thing, which was Patchwork and uh, the final one, as usual, the Thaddeus. Thaddeus. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it was good. Okay, Raynad, what did you think? Yeah, it was fun. Um, they definitely seem to be getting harder as the weeks progress. Mm-hmm. I thought that the class challenges were really hard this time around. Um, but, yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. I liked them. I liked, uh, yeah, Patchwork was the coolest one. The, whichever one had the the meat hook and yeah, it was definitely yeah definitely designed much much different than than a lot of the rest of them right just given that the, the there were a lot of parameters that were set that that aren't typical right of just normal bosses, uh, but yeah patchwork for me was the hardest too. What did you guys use to finish each one? Trump, uh, for patchwork I patched together some mage deck. I am using my Europe account on these, so I don't have all the cards. So I just built a aggro mage with oh, a lot nice. of guys who summoned guys, and then Fender Vargas, Sunfury Protector, um, and some Frostbolt and Ice Lance. And it was good. Yeah. Would you, would you use right now? For uh... nice no, for all of them. <laughs> you use it for all. Of them. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, I mean aggro. I could see aggro working for. For all of them. Shield bear is OP. Yeah, shield bear is OP. Okay, yeah, that would make sense actually. Really? Zoo worked for all of them? Uh I didn't okay, I didn't actually try Zoo for the the one that deals one damage to stuff. But I uh, used it for the rest of them. Grubby they beat all good. the rest of them. I okay. used handlock for the other one. Because warlocks are sweet. But it the the one that deals one damage to everything I used handlock. Um, one damage. You just two, right? Playing on easy mode right now? Yeah, we talking heroic or I, what, man? I haven't done heroic yet. No. What? Okay. Oh right. man. I got, Heroic's I got, much harder, I did, man. Yeah. I know, I know. I did it for the first couple of weeks, but this one, like this set, actually had cards that are relevant. I just wanted to get on the ladder. Yeah, as I hear you. As I could. I did too. People. I I, so, I spent like a day like on ladder, and then I went back to doing the heroic because I was just excited to try out the new cards. You got to do heroic though, and then gotta gotta see what you use for it. I ended up I using. I mean, I used a combo of. Mage and Priest, I believe. I think Mage for the for Patchwork, just with the freezing elements, and then I ended up using Priest for the rest of them. Including the heroes, the hero uh, challenges, too. How are the hero challenges for you, Trump? The hero challenges are really easy. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I'm trying to remember, actually, either one or two shot them. Uh, I mean, they build a pretty relevant deck for you, and sometimes you get the worst cards that they put in, but Usually pretty fair. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But it was really fun, though. I mean, I, I, st- I just like that they try to do a different flavor. They've done a really good job with the different flavors for, for each of the bosses, and um, it's kind of hard to do that, quite honestly. So they did, they've done a really, really good job with that. And we still got two more left. We've got, what's Sapphire? Or how do you pronounce that? Saf- Saffron? Saffron. Saffron, and then Kalthazad. So that's just going to be a... Uh, what? Kelt- Kelt- is that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Close <laughs> enough. Close enough. All right. So one more, one more release next week, and then we'll be, you know, finished with 
with uh with Naxxramas. We got the Paladin cards coming out, so <laughs> you know the Ooze is the big one. I think I think Ooze is going to be a really interesting an interesting card, and even just seeing Grobulus using was it Grob? I think it was Grobulus that used it a lot, right? In in this uh, adventure mode, that was that was kind of difficult at times. Whenever he got the buff and that sort of thing. So it should be good. We'll talk about it, obviously, next week, too. Uh, but the new cards, and, of course, the new cards, I think a lot of folks speculated that it was going to really affect the metagame uh, this week or just moving forward. And I kind of wanted to see if you guys think that, I mean, or the results or the results of it so far for you guys have been just that. Have you seen huge changes in the metagame? Raynat, I'll start off with you. Oh, yeah, definitely. It was um, the first few hours were pretty crazy. Everyone was trying to put Undertaker into every class where it didn't belong, and that was surprisingly effective. Um, I tried it myself in a lot of things, too. And then after that, it was just like, I think I played like 15 Warriors out of 20 games. And then um, so people were really liking the weapon. And mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, then I've seen a lot of Priests. Now it's back to kind of a variety of things. And mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy swings, people just trying different things out. Everyone kind of started with Zoo, got disappointed, <laughs> then uh, tried other stuff. Man. Trump, your, your uh, I guess, observations of the metagame so far? Uh, there is a lot of Hunter right now. Mm -hmm. And since this week was the Warrior and Priest class cards, there's no surprise that I noticed a surge in Priest and Warrior yesterday. Yeah, so and... what do... Okay, go Good amount of Undertaker and Mad Scientist experimentation, also. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Hunter, Mad Scientist, you know, works with Hunter, right? With the with the secrets. I didn't actually think about Hunter originally. When we were thinking of scientists. I was thinking more about Mage, but um, we're we're gonna talk about uh, decks later. And Raynat's bringing a Hunter deck that has Mad Scientist, so we'll speak a little bit more about that. You know, a lot of people were talking about Zombie Chow, right? Just kind of going through. Let's just go kind of go through each of the cards and kind of what we've been seeing. Um, Zombie Chow, I think a lot of people thought were gonna was gonna be extremely powerful, like in ver various decks. I think even maybe even Zoo, you know, Zoo included in that, and uh, maybe in tandem with Undertaker too. What do you guys think about Zombie Chow so far? I'm impressed with him in Zoo. He's as good as I expected, and in uh, control decks, he's a little bit less good than I expected. It's kind of underwhelming. A lot of matchups where he's just kind of dead, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Even in a control priest? Yeah. The priest is the only control deck I've put him in so far. Um, okay. my, my warrior decks are like hybrid, all hybrid aggro at this point. But yeah, it's. Yeah, I was like kind of underwhelmed by him. I kind of wish I had Holy Smite most of the time to have instead so that I could. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Like trigger Pyromancer or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trump? That's true. It's not as good as I thought it was. And if you're streaming and you are playing Zombie Chow, you are the laughing stock right now because everyone's like, well, why would you pay man to make your opponent gain five life? <laughs> they don't understand <laughs> the glory of the Zombie Chow. I still hold my faith in it and I will keep it in my priest control deck for now. And I um, am willing to admit that it may not be as good as I thought it was in all control decks. Mm hmm. Great in zoo. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in priest it makes. I mean, priest makes sense because you can actually deal damage to your opponent, right? Um, so, be surprised if people didn't understand that at least. I mean, looking I at it, it's a very minor part of it, but yeah, true. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's try and take a look at some of the other cards. Well, let's talk about a card that nobody talks about: the Wailing Soul. Have any of you guys actually tried this? And, um, you know, if you have, like, what, what kind of benefits or what kind of scenarios have you liked it? Uh, this is a card that's kind of being released, like, I feel like one set too early because there aren't quite enough cards in the game right now to synergize with it just yet. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much just Ancient Watcher for the good synergy. I did see Tides of Time, Hunter's Marked, a Dancing Swords, and with an Explosive Trap out and passed. And then the other guy played Wailing, so... <laughs> but, uh, oh, man. Yeah, okay, I don't know. all it's right, a, I can see that. Yeah, it's a powerful card. I don't know, it's just there's not, not enough things that work with it just yet. A lot of the Death Rattles are kind of... They kind of have marginal drawbacks, not huge ones, but mm -hmm. yeah. It's like only... It's only Ancient Watcher that has great synergy with it, and a lot of times you'd rather have a Spellbreaker because 
it still works well with that, but you can also target their stuff. It's, the more, it's more flexible, even mm-hmm. though the stats are worse. Right. Trump, what do you think? Wailing Soul. Uh, plus one right now. All right. Yeah, I feel like this, this card is coming out about a season and a half too late because it would do great against Freeze Mage. And where we're just for the freezing frost nova wouldn't even matter, uh, but unfortunately, not many people are playing that at this point. So uh, it, we'll see if the this becomes a little bit more powerful in the future. Uh, so we talked to we talked a little bit about Undertaker. You mentioned Undertaker. Just everybody just playing it and everything. Uh, I think the reason people are playing it and everything is because it's a it's a solid one drop that just gets buffed by virtually uh, almost anything if you're playing an aggro deck at this point. Uh, so thoughts on Undertaker? Uh, for aggro decks and just generally for any any deck right now uh it's a really cool card because it's like because it's neutral so like in every single class now Mm -hmm. because of undertaker and zombie chow you can build it in a way that you have an aggressive early game curve um and a lot of people are experimenting with like undertaker and shaman undertaker Mm -hmm. I was playing Undertaker Hunter before I arrived at the list that I did, and yeah, like uh, I tried Undertaker Priest, tried it in everything just to because you can build any deck like Zoo now that you have a one drop for every class, <laughs> um, and it was strong but kind of higher variance than I expected because if it's in your opening hand, it's amazing in pretty much any deck you put it in, but when you draw it in the mid game or late game, a lot of decks just aren't built to take advantage of like a one mana two three in the mid game. Which is one of the reasons Zombie Chow is so underwhelming in control. Um, so yeah, I, like uh, Undertaker is the same thing. If it's not in your opening hand, it's just so weak that I ended up cutting it because it's kind of like the wild growth gambit. If it's in your opening hand, it's great, but if it's not, it's uh, really underwhelming in most decks. Mm-hmm. Okay, Trump? Plus one right now. <laughs> I got a light lead with Trump next time. All right, <laughs> the next one, Mad Scientist. Trump, what do you think about Mad, Mad Scientist? cool people are trying it in decks with secrets and they should okay i mean is <laughs> okay uh value wise is it i mean or or from the standpoint of building a deck is it hard are there any things you need to take into account when using mad scientists um from the standpoint of maybe even just like burning through cards too quickly or or anything like that i mean it's because of just i guess from the surface it seems like it's great value right because you, you essentially get two cards um from from a two mana card there, if I got two two, uh, so what? Any any kind of things you have to take into account when you're playing Mad Scientist? You should try to play it when you have at least one secret left in your deck, because <laughs> hopefully that's the way you have built your deck. Yeah. Okay. Do you have that? What What do you think the minimum amount of secrets are that you have to run for it to be consistent enough to to run in your deck? Eh, two, three. Okay. I've tried it a little bit in Mage. It's been kind of hard, actually. I, I think it I think it works a little bit better in Hunter right now, at least from what I've seen. But Aggro Mage actually works well. You know, having Undertaker and leading, and then just following up with Scientists is pretty cool. Yeah, I have been a bit surprised by some of the decks I've played against, which are running the Mad Scientist. Mage is one of those yeah. classes in particular, which looks like it could be really helped with it. And perhaps even duplicate is being used. Yeah, duplicate's great card draw. Base. I mean, a card draw on mechanism for it. Almost guaranteed solid cards because you can. You a lot of times you can determine what you're going to get um, with a with the really strong taunt, taunt cards and things like that. All right, so it looks like the uh, next up, Fugin and Stalic. And uh, Raynet. I, I see how it is. I don't get a turn. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry Raynet. Oh, it's so, so, so terrible. What'd you think? What'd no, you think no, of that? This is card? like the only card I wanted to talk about, actually. Okay, it's, awesome, it's awesome. Incredible. Well, this and the Fugin and stuff. Yeah. Um. So at first, we talked like on Last Value Town about how good we expected these cards to be, and I yeah. thought Dark Cultist was going to be the best creature in the game. <laughs> yep, but, I remember um, that. He's actually, I think, after playing with these cards, I think he's actually the second best creature in the game behind Mad Scientist. Wow. Who is, in my opinion, the best creature in the game. Um, if you compare it to like. Like, if there was a loot hoarder that had one extra health, I think it's safe to say it would be a two of in every single deck in the game. Um, and then Mad Scientist not only draws you a secret, which, in my opinion, is comparable to a random card because it's a secret is a card you'd play in your deck in most cases anyway, like an explosive trap or a freezing trap. 
Um, so it's already like it's already like on that level of would be a two of in every deck if it were like loot hoarder. But it also it doesn't just draw you the card like it plays it for free. So you're drawing your mm -hmm. card that you would be playing in your deck anyway, and then you're innervating to put it into play when it dies. It's absolutely disgusting. Like the games where you have it in your opening compared to the, the games where you don't, it's a huge difference. And it's not just like a marginal value, but it's like really, really strong. On top of that, I haven't even experimented with it in Mage yet, but I know that the way that is wrong to build it is with Kirintor Mages yeah, and Kirintor's Real Arcanist terrible. and all that crap. Mm -hmm. The way you build it is with the Broken Secret, which is Ice Block. That card is game-breaking, right? So if you just play a Freeze Mage deck with four copies of Ice Block, like that's pretty strong in four my opinion. Four copies Guaranteed of ice to draw block. two of them per game if you play two Mad Scientists in your deck. So, yeah, I think that's more the way to approach it. But anyway, I've been super impressed with that card, and I think that the classes with secrets got way stronger. Like, the card was just so gross. That's why That's why I think Hunter's the best deck. It's just like, it's, I don't know. It's wait, so, wait, so you said four ice blocks? Uh, well, four copies. Right? Like, you have 26. Like, if ice block is the only secret in your deck, right? Yeah. You have four copies of it. You won't, you won't trigger four times, but you will draw it twice as often as if you only played two of them. It's like you'll get both your ice oh, blocks. Oh, you're just saying the po the probability of getting it is much higher? Is that what you're saying? You don't get four copies of it. No, no. you have two mad scientists yeah. and two ice blocks. Yeah. But, like, you play mage, sometimes you don't draw both ice blocks. Most okay, 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 sure. Yeah, blocks. so your probability is higher of getting it. Yeah, if you okay. play mad scientists, you'll always have two ice blocks. Right. Yeah. I got a rules question, like by the way. Okay. don't actually know. Uh, if you have an ice block out already, and you play mm -hmm. mad scientist and it dies, what happens if you have another ice block in your deck? It doesn't do anything. If that's your only secret. If that's the only secret you have left in your deck, and, and it's a repeat of what you already have equipped, it doesn't do anything. All right. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> that's one thing. Well, okay, so I mean, that's that's an interesting statement you made about it, Raynad. And I, I, I think I, I agree with a lot of it, but the thing about secrets a lot of times is it's very situational, right? To, to get, like, maximum effect. For instance, Freezing Trap, right? Um, if, if you're playing... A terrible deck like Mage, I agree with you because mm -hmm. the secrets are terrible and the class is terrible and yeah. all the cards are terrible. <laughs> but if you're playing Hunter, like you'll be playing explosives and freezing traps anyway, right? So like now you have this two mana two two loot hoarder in your deck mm -hmm. that nobody can kill and nobody can ignore, and it's like the most frustrating thing to play against in the world. You just want it in every opening hand. And on top of that, you have Eagle Horn Bow, which just goes like oh, that's true. that card just puts it in now. It's just three mana pyroblast that you can split up among three creatures. Like <laughs> it's been pretty strong. That's, that's that's a good way to look at it. Sean, what are your thoughts on on that, those comments about Mad Scientist? I think that was a good description, and my opinion of the card has gone up as a result. Okay. All right, good stuff. All right, next up we got Fugin and Stalig. And uh, I know Raynad has a lot of comments on it, but Trump, I want to get your opinion on, on those two cards first, and then we'll end with Raynad. Okay. I've always uh, said that if there were decks that would run these, it would probably be the late game control decks, and I wasn't sure on whether or not they would be viable. Raynad has a strong opinion on it, though. Mm -hmm. Raynad? Yeah, yeah, I think they're awesome. Like Any deck that's uh, slow should be playing them. I think they're the best finisher in the game. Because up until these cards were uh, released, people were playing random expensive dudes in their decks. Karen Bloodhoof, Ragnaros. Like, those cards are inconsistent, and some of them, like Ragnaros and Ysera and Elixstraza, they just cost too much to ever come out against a deck like Zoo. Like, you'll just never play them. These cards don't have that problem. Like, in a long game, they ensure that you have inevitability. So if the game goes long, like, you will eventually kill them. Uh, is too much value to, to ignore or overcome for most decks. Mm -hmm. Then against aggro, you have like a 5-mana 4-7, which, unlike Alexstrasza, you can actually plop down on the board and do something with in the early game, which is a lot stronger than uh, like just random expensive legendaries and okay. more consistent than cards like Ragnaros. So I've been playing it in Priest, uh, Warrior. I've been playing it in like a lot of stuff. It's been They've been really good. I've been really happy with them. What's the percentage of the? Uh, what percentage of the time do you actually get Thaddeus? Fifty. Wow, fifty. That's that's pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, I haven't actually gotten a chance to try them yet, but I tried those two yet in in my control decks. A fifty percent getting an eleven eleven. That's amazing. 
there's like only three outcomes. You, you die before you get the 50s, before you get them. Uh, you kill them before you trigger the second one, or you kill them with the Thaddeus. And uh, yeah, it's um, really surprising. Like how like if your deck, if things are going as planned for your deck, uh, then yeah, it, it'll trigger like most games that you win. I would say. Right, so just to clarify, if you silence one of them, then Thaddeus just is not possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you see that happening at all, or a lot, or no? Nope. No. I've had my opponent play one half of the combo a lot, and then I get Thaddeus by only playing one piece. Mm. <laughs> oh my god, that's that's so funny. Oh, that's crazy. Actually, the because the, they both synergize with each other, or your opponent synergizes with you. That's crazy. This one time he brawled and I had both out. That was fun. I had two wow. Thaddeus. Wow. <laughs> two Thaddeus. <laughs> oh my god. Sweet. That's, that is They're dream. Yeah. yeah, totally. That's dream scenario. Crazy. Well, I can't wait to run it. Have you actually run it, Trump, or at all? Or I, I haven't it. had the bravery to try it yet. Yeah. I'd also like to mention before there are riots that you have to silence the second one. Oh, the second one. The first right. one getting silenced doesn't matter at all. Right. It's true. Okay. Well, I can't wait to Plus do that. Plus, the That's... offer mentioned brawl and double death case, in which you only get one Thaddeus if one of them is silenced. Only. Right, only. <laughs> yeah, only. Exactly. Okay, well, definitely try that, guys. Try that out, guys, if you haven't tried out Pugan and Stalag. Um, and then let's finish off with the classes. You know, you talked about Dark Cultus. Um, you said it's the second best card now, uh, Raynad, instead of the, the best, but you still feel very, very highly about it, so let's talk about that, and I guess the best way to use it uh, currently with the priest archetypes we've seen i don't know we're actually trump you're, we're gonna actually talk about it with with your deck but what do you why do you or do you do you still see it as being like a broken card right now because last time you were on yeah, that's what you called it okay yeah it's the second best creature in the game i'm pretty sure mad scientist should or will get nerfed to like drawing the secret instead of playing it but um wow. dark cultist is just yeah it's i mean it's it's as good as i expected it's broken it's mad scientist was astronomically better than i expected um, I feel silly for not seeing it earlier, but yeah, Dark Cultus has been incredible. Like every time I play it, um, I, I, at first I tried building decks to like fully maximize his utility. So I was playing like Undertaker Priest with Ancient Watcher package as well. So the deck was like all thirty cards were two card combos. It was like Undertaker, Undertaker plus Death Rattle dudes. Then it had Watcher Sun Fury. Then you you could like Sun Fury your Nerubian Egg. Your Nerubian Egg would buff your Undertaker. Your Crazed <laughs> Alchemist would trigger your Nerubian Egg and so help cool. your Ball Shadow Priest nice. work. And like, mm -hmm. yeah. And the whole deck was just bad zoo because your hero power didn't synergize with it at all. Um, but it was cool. And yeah, anyway, I just put Dark Cultist in a normal Priest deck, and it was it was a three four for three with the Death Rattle for some <laughs> reason. And that card was real. And yeah. Yeah. Trump, thoughts on it? I mean, you're, you're running it in your priest, so it's kind of a precursor to the deck talk, but... Yeah. It's somewhat straightforward in that it's just a 3-mana three 3-4 three, most of the time, mm -hmm. and that's good enough, and when it does trigger, it's really good. And it does help to play a card like Zombie Chow just to make sure that it has a target more likely. Hmm. Okay. Good stuff. And then Warrior, last thing that's going to be a Death Bite. I think Every warrior player has been looking forward to this one. Just another weapon, another weapon at four that uh, has a lot of comboing ability too with the, the second swing of it. Uh, thoughts on the results of this card so far, Trump? I gotta admit, this card, I had... When we talked about it, like, when we first reviewed, like, most of the max cards mm -hmm. a month ago or whatever, yeah, I right. said, nah, it's probably gonna see at least one copy in warrior decks. But that was probably too tame a read, and I think it's a two of in every warrior right now. It's it's one of those cards where when you see it in practice, it's even better because it's like, oh, the first attack it's four, and the second attack it's five, and that's not even describing the full extent of it. Mm -hmm, right. So it's strong. Right, Ned? Oh yeah, I think my opinion at the time was it was like the second best class card behind Dark Cultist. I still stand by that. It's so. Uh... Really, really strong. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true silver champion with, like, but better. Like, it kills Yeti on the second hit. It has Whirlwind. It has Enrage Synergy, Acolyte Synergy. <laughs> like, just kills them with Gromash and Turn 8. And it's dumb. Yeah, it's a really good card. 
Uh, I've died from that girl watch combo a lot. That second swing, oh my god, so good. Uh, yeah, I agree too. I think war I think that that card's been amazing for the warriors. And, and you don't have to change much too. That's that card is like easy to add to the current control warrior too, and just to improve it. But okay, well, anyways, that's gonna conclude the meta the meta segment for today. We're gonna actually go into talking about the decks. So, Raynad and Trump each brought a deck that they've been playing, working on on the ladder, and we're gonna talk a little bit about it. Obviously, some cards that we, we just mentioned are, are going to be included. And um, let's start off with Raynad, your your Hunter deck that we have here on the left. It uh, yeah. has a lot of a lot of things that we've seen, you know, just with the Hunters recently, just the, the mid-range. But you do have that Mad Scientist in there, so talk about it. Yeah, I wanted to climb uh, really high on Ladder today because I, I found that Ladder was easiest, like, right after they release a wing. <laughs> The past two weeks in a row, every Wednesday, I've hit rank two in NA. And, um, so I, I was playing a lot, right? And I started with Zoo, and then that deck took me from like 300 to 50, but it kind of plateaued. So I tried Priest, and then that that tanked me to 300, but then it brought me back up to 15, and then that plateaued. And eventually I tried Hunter. And at first I tried like Undertaker plus Leper Gnome, so it was more aggressive. Um, then I just realized those Undertaker is just like really awkward when you draw it in the mid game and late game. So I just cut it and played all the good cards. So it's just like the old Hunter deck with, uh, you know, Web Spinner, all the mid-range creatures that are good, Houndmaster, Savannah Hyman, all that late-game stuff. But then it has Mad Scientist and these traps that you're kind of okay with playing anyway. And that really pushes it over the top because now you're playing a class that was already the best class in the game before this week, and then you're putting the best creature in the game into it. Um, and then the, the traps shore up your zoo matchup, which lets you cut cards like Timberwolf for more broken cards against Control. And I went 19-1 and one with it on ladder wow. up to rank uh, 5. And then I stopped playing because I promised on Twitter that I would stream. And then I started at rank 3 today, and then I streamed for 2 hours and we hit Legendary. I think it went 18-3, and three, I want to say. I think it's really good. Um, I'm also extremely sleep deprived. I've been awake for like 24 hours now, so I'm sure I wasn't playing my best. Um, but yeah, the deck is pretty dumb. I think it's just really, really 37 good. 37 right and now. four. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's on stream. <laughs> on stream games don't count. Those are those are games where your opponent knows every card in your hand. <laughs> but you're still like eight, what 18 and three with with, with uh, people in that deck or <laughs> stream sniping you here. It's like crazy. And that scientist doesn't care. <laughs> Bill it's Nye true. gets in for six or just values him to death is like a uh, card is so sick. So what'd you replace? I'm trying to see what you replaced um, you know, from the traditional or just not the traditional, but what we've seen. The fact that you have to think about it means it's Yeah, that, that's true, that's that. true. It's probably it's because boar. It's, it's nothing you're missing. Yeah, it's, I think it's boar and wolf. Wolves, I think. Yeah, it's boar, timber wolf, dire wolf, deadly shot, yeah. IMB one. Oh, of there's Koda. no deadly shot in here? Oh my gosh. Okay. Interesting. That's a really clean deck. Uh, the two flares are like the part that a lot of people would ask, why aren't those tracking? Well, they're not tracking because <clears throat> uh, about a week from now, once everyone start, starts copying this uh, <laughs> and starts pretending that I always thought Mad Scientist was broken, right. uh, this will be everywhere. And the, because its only bad matchup is the mirror, yeah. you need flare instead of tracking. And there's just no room for other stuff because you need all these cards. So. If you want, unless you want to shave like a kill command or something, yeah, that's yeah, that's why there's no tracking. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely looks good. Nice and clean. Nice and short too. This this deck is tiny. Um. Yeah, I can't. Wait. That's. Gonna, I think a lot of people are gonna be, probably be trying it right after this show. <laughs> so maybe seeing a lot more hunters. Like this. Like we haven't seen enough hunters already on the on the the ladder. Hunters always. Hunters been strong this entire season. Mm -hmm. But all right, let's talk about priest. And Trump, you got you have uh, you know you brought your priest here to talk about, and got the dark cultus in there. Uh, but but you know a lot of things look pretty similar to I guess the priest that you've been playing for for some time, or at least the this season so far. So why don't you talk a little bit about this? Okay, I, I will prelude this by saying I've got a bad feeling about this, and South Hunter deck does look really good, <laughs> and the priest uh, has had some quite some issues with the hunter as of late. Uh, that said. I did climb up to rank 2 legend at one point with a priest deck, and but that was against a more zoo heavy metagame. So recently I've been having my daps with that. But out of the way of that, uh, this deck 
it's got some unfairness going for it. You've got the you've still got the Akanai Circle, which I did consider cutting for the Dark Cultist and Zombie Chow, but instead of cutting that combo, I decided to cut a copy of Holy Fire, a copy of Holy Nova, an Earthen Ring Fire Seer, and a Death Lord. Uh, Death Lord is one of those cards that is really bad against the more usual hunter, but this one only has two uh, Mark and no Kodo, so not as bad, but I still see Mark's Kodos and Deadly Shots around. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, it, it has the basic control plan still. You try to weather the storm. Uh, the zombie chow doesn't matter for the opponent's gaining life because you pretty much will at one point either strongly control the board and then you will kill them at your leisure or they will kill you and it's just useful to have a, an early drop uh, so that you can curve out nicely and perhaps your dark cultist will buff your zombie chow. And that's pretty good when that happens. Um, okay. It plays as you would expect of a control deck. With extra bonuses, sometimes you get stuff to be really imbalanced when you have a cleric and then you heal with circle healing for free, or you have Akanai Soul Priest and you flame mm -hmm. strike. Okay, uh, so one of the things that I think uh, Amaz mentioned when he, he was on Value Town was, um, you know, I think his knee-jerk reaction was just to replace the injured blade masters with the dark cultists just because uh, he felt like the dark cultists was just a little upgrade to it but you've actually included both so um is what well, i guess why do you feel like it's necessary to keep both uh in, instead of you know maybe keeping that holy fire which is you know pretty key to for removal in the mid mid you know just kind of mid to late game I'm very fond of the Injured Blade Master. I think it goes well with Circle of Healing. Obviously mm -hmm. it does. And yep. uh, the problem with that, though, is that it is a bit vulnerable to the Hunter in that they can just Hunter's Mark or Deadly Shot it. And the Hunter is rising in popularity. Um, so I can see that. However, I think in general, Injured Blade Master holds a really strong spot in the Priest. But I wouldn't, I I'm not absolutely in love with it, and I could see mm -hmm. perhaps changing that out. Okay. Raynat, how do you uh, what do you think of this priest deck? Um, mine, I like the parts that we're both playing. I like to see because it means that those parts are probably correct. But I'm also playing Blade Master with Cultist. Um, personally, I'm playing two Shadowward Pain, um, and I would play two Shadowward Pain before the first copy of Holy Smite. Um, Death Lord, I think, is absolute trash. I would never put that card in my deck after <laughs> playing with it a lot. Um, Azure Drake also, I think, is a little too slow. So, um, like, my list is very similar. It looks like it's a solid deck. The Priest is really good. Um, I, instead of the Ragnaros and Sylvanas, I'm playing Foig and Stalag. Uh, zero Azure Drake. Yeah. Uh, I do play a Lothab. Um, because a lot of times you, you can, like, around turn 8, you know, you can play Lothab Dark Cultist, since you have, like, more mid rangey mm -hmm. dudes. Whenever you play a creature alongside Lothab and you're ahead on board, uh, it's just too powerful. So, um, it also shores up the, the Rogue matchup, which can be tough. Um, other than that, it's like pretty similar, yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah, just pretty much the Shadowed Pain and then the Wind Condition. I only play one Thought Steal, two Smite. Those are the cards that go back and forth on. Sometimes I play one Smite, two Thought Steal. Depends on how much control there is and stuff. But yeah, one, it's a good deck. One deal. Thought Steal. It's like blasphemy, man, as a priest. <laughs> no, it's, no, like, it's, blasphemy. <laughs> it's only good in some matchups, yeah. It's like, it's fine. Yeah. So, Death Lord, uh, so Trump, the biggest benefit of Death Lord in this. Biggest benefit of Death Lord is it's extremely strong against Sue. Biggest downside of Death Lord is it's extremely weak against Hunter and Warrior. Mm -hmm. And I will admit that Hunter and Warrior are quite popular as of late. So I understand the uh, concern about it. And oftentimes against Hunter and against Warrior, I will find it uh, holding. I will find it dead in my hand. And I, I have considered cutting this second copy of it. Mm -hmm. Like I used to run two copies and it carried me. So there, there's a little bit of warmth remaining. But I understand that was during the heyday of Zoo. As for the Shadowward Pains, I understand it's a pretty good card. However, I think that Smite works better with Firemancer. Also, I run two copies of Cabal Shadow Priest. Uh, your deck over there with the Hunter actually has nothing that can be Shadowward Pained. I mean, that can't be Cabal Shadow Priest. And I understand that Shadowward Pain is a lot faster, but I find I don't need it mm -hmm. that quickly. I will also mention that I really like Cabal Shadow Priesting Mad Scientists. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, as far as Fuegan Stalag versus Sylvanas Ragnaros, I think that's an interesting call, and you'll have more five drops, so I can then understand cutting the Azure Drakes. But then, what are you going to use for card draw, if you even need it? Nothing. No, you don't need it. You don't. Uh, need, your you hero don't need power it. is innate card advantage because Priest has the best scaling hero power in the game. Um, oh wow. Okay, that's an interesting way to look at that. You still have what? You still have two. You still have two from the shield, and probably going to get one. On average, one from the clerics too. So four there. Yeah, yeah. also like cycling that really card advantage. Like yeah. cleric will either replace itself by drawing one card, or it will draw ten. That's like yeah. not. There's <laughs> no thing, really. Yeah. Uh, and thought still yeah. gives you at least you know a, a few too, even though it's not necessarily synergistic with your hand. Yeah, there's plenty yeah. actually in here. If you like ever get ahead on board on a turn, then your hero power becomes draw a card every turn. Because if you're ever ahead on board, like you have a cultist, they don't because. They don't have a cultist because the card's broken. You kill their guy <laughs> and you heal it. And they kill their other guy and you heal it. And yeah, sometimes you're picking off like one third of Haunted Creeper a turn, but over the course of like <clears throat> 10 or 12 turns, that ends up being a lot of board presence and a lot of cards. So um, yeah, mine's like more of a fast priest deck, I guess. Yeah, like Zombie Chow's the one card I wasn't sure about. I'm pretty sure I'm going to cut him because I think with two Shadowed Pain and two Holy Smite, that's enough early game. And yeah, my thing with Death Lord too is like. Um, since I think it's definitely right to play two Shadowed Pain, so I have like four cheap spot removal spells, uh, even with two Shadow Priests. I think that the zoo matchup is good enough that I don't need to like beat up on that deck more. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to like shore up the harder matchups, which are Warrior, honestly, lately. A matchup used to be unlosable, now it's like really hard. They're way more aggressive. So I'm to play Spectral Knight. Yeah. Gonna hit. So, yeah. so Zombie Chow, you know, you know, we've been talking about just the the pretty standard turn one zombie chow into a dark cultist that can possibly you know uh, buff up zombie chow do we ever see the scenario you know that a lot of people were talking about with akani soul priest and and doing 10 damage potentially with it does that ever happen in the game trump i have not personally done it yet however when i draw the zombie chows late and i still have a circle and an akana i will uh sometimes think about doing that instead of playing the zombie chow However, it has not occurred yet. Mm, okay. So not very, not really a, that viable of a play, uh, I guess, from what people were originally looking at that card. Okay, cool. Any, so I guess before we, we conclude, any other decks that you guys, you know, obviously we're not taking a look at, but any, any other decks have been interesting you so far? Warrior's really strong. <laughs> yeah. Aggressive warrior, like... Uh... Two Corcoran, a bunch of weapons, uh, Leroy. It's really good. Yeah. Any fun uh, kind of enraging type of warrior you tried? In order to fit in enraged cards, you need to cut good cards. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. It's like for every Amani Berserker you want to put in your deck, you have to cut like an Armor Smith or a Frothing Berserker or something. Or I don't, not, uh, you know, something. Removal. Um, I'm just a big fan of playing like cards are good all the time. No situational cards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Trump, any other deck that you've been playing around with? No, I've just been playing this one. However, from what I've seen, I think that Major Secrets and the Mad Scientist looks like it has potential. And I also agree that Warrior has a lot of potential. And I'm biting my tongue on this Hunter deck. Like, I think it's really good, but I... It looks really good. I mean, it, it does I mean really come good. on. It just I, I, it looks like, really I'm good. Because it's such a predator to this priest deck that I'm just sad. That's all. I'm but sad. hey, you gotta move with the times. Yeah. That's just And then, you know, somebody will figure out something that counters this hunter and then you can go back to this priest deck, basically. <laughs> At least that's how it's happened in the in the past with the meta mm -hmm. game. But good stuff. I mean definitely a good time. It's a definitely a great time in, in the meta. Uh, we're seeing like lots of stuff. I've been trying to make a mage work. It's been pretty hard. I mean, the aggro mage actually does work kind of kind of nicely, but I've been trying to make a more control type of mage work, and that is just super hard. Uh, so I might actually end up giving up on it. But it has been has been fun trying to get the legend with mage this this uh, this season. So we'll see if that ends up happening. Okay, guys, we're gonna go into some Q and A. Um, Actually, before we do that, we're going to take a quick break. But I uh, want you guys to go ahead and tweet me your questions, at ChamMV, and we'll try to get to as many as we can. 
but we'll be right back after this.